All right, so back to this. Yeah, this is what part seven. We're just carrying on. Um, again, I'm gonna keep playing this. Gonna try to get this secret. Uh, whatever you'd call it. Um, wait for the yeah. There's the all the music. This music's just forever gonna be ingrained in my mind now. But again, something where we're just trying to get the uh. I guess we'll see if we get a secret cutscene. Who knows, right? It seems to be fairly inconsistent, but yeah, the big things we're just carrying on, you know, again, I still feel like this chronological thing that we're doing is the best because it's like, okay, we actually can, you know, see like the story and right. And it's, it makes it coherent to us versus just us jumping around. Right. I guess we jumped around a bit because we read some of Toko's logs, but that was simply because like, we haven't read like hers in a while. So I just want to so but yeah again we're just gonna carry on and it's like you know yeah we got a ton of lane logs i mean we we know they literally go up to like 150 and again the big interesting thing that we're looking forward to is kind of toko's logs ending and what you know brings that about right because i feel like you know the last toko log you know was very uh very interesting right you know like borderline you know asking to no longer see lane as well as potentially resignate it's like you know or again some mean or resignation right so again it's something there to where it's like you know the big thing with that is that uh seems like you know again you know stuff's gonna kind of pop off and take an interesting turn uh also especially now that lane has uh what would you call it um that lane has her navi right in her computer so Again, so, yeah. Again, just, uh, we'll see there. Sorry, I am I swear, like, I, I think there's something wrong with me because I just have, like, a tendency to, like, I don't want to say argue with people online, but it's more so, like, I mean, you can see my previous videos I made. I, I'm, I'm fairly, like, I don't want to say, like, you know, egotistic or, like, self, what would you call it, self-righteous or self-centered, but I'm definitely passionate about some of the things that I believe in. Um, but it's also, I guess, you know, that's, that's a flaw, right? But who knows, right? You know, it's anonymous, even if it's not anonymous on the internet, right? You know, it's like, it's just, it's the internet, right? It's the internet, you know, freaking uh, relevant to lane, right? Digital, virtual, right? So, yeah. All right. So yeah, probably I'm just fuck it. You know, it's I it just seems to be so inconsistent. Um, but it's just whatever. Let's see what our Interesting thing. So we already know her two main friends are Tomo and then Kyoto, right? Uh, again, the big thing is that uh, Tomo is the guy friend we know who we saw later on in some of the movies, which we presume he's the one she's communicating with on her uh, Navi, right? And then Kyoto obviously is, I guess, this equivalent of uh alice right the game's equivalent of alice from the show where she's kind of a real life friend and the one who like she uh, hangs out and spends time with right but again the big thing being not only between her going home but then tomo moving right again feeling kind of isolated but you know the fact that tomo's writing her right better than freaking takeshi and koto right you know let's put it that way but or toko right you know um again better than them but it's something to where it's like Again, shows that, like, the big thing is how this impacts her mood. Again, you know, her being happy because that. An interesting thing being her saying she watched him more than she watched him or he watched her. But then again, that could be a per a perspective thing, right? I mean, we don't know if that's the case because, again, it's through Lane's own, you know, perception, right? I mean, it's kind of the same with Toka and Takeshi. I don't want to, like, draw the comparison between the two because Toka and Takeshi are grown-ass, you know, people, right? And dealing with just 
you know, normal like dating, like couple, you know, BFGF issues versus, you know, Lane's a very, you know, uh, broken individual, I guess is a good way to put it. And then uh, to, they're all both just like middle schoolers in that with that regard, right? So and I find it very interesting because, again, a big thing, and I, I talked about this in the whole, this is going in a different direction, but I talked about this in the whole serial experiment uh, lane, you know, community be an annoying video I made along with the Bochi one because I just combined them because I recently watched those two. The problem being when you have a show that's as abstract and as, you know, interpretive as this, your event, your net, and it's the same with indie as a genre, right? You're going to get, you know, people who are just like, oh, this is how it is. Anything else is wrong. You know, you're an idiot if you think it's anything else. And that's, ironically enough, one of the biggest sort of questions and dividers that I saw within the community was whether or not Lane and Alice were gay for each other, which is like, eh, well, again, you know, for me, it's like, like, I thought that I saw him as more like a sister, you know, like, again, because obviously we know freaking Lane's sister, right, isn't. Again, granted, through her own flawed perception, you know, perspective, right? But something where her sister didn't really seem to be, like, that much of a sister. Like, I can say as an older sibling, like, you know, Lane's older sister isn't really that great of a sibling, right? Versus Alice kind of seemed to be that sister that she never had or wished she had or someone who could have potentially helped her. But again, that's besides point. That's just my take on it. But one of the biggest divine takes was whether Alice and Lane were gay for each other. And then people would genuinely get like so invested in it. It's like, dude, like out of all the things you can choose to get invested in in the show, it's like, Jesus Christ. Well, whatever. Again, it raises the point, like I said, when you have a show that's as like not as concrete and comprehensive, you're just going to get people who are like my way or the highway, right? When it comes to this stuff. Again, overall problem with the indie genre itself and this kind of, you know, media. But again, the thing there being, I want to say like you, I guess you could make the extension that Tomo is kind of like Alice in the sense, at least if you view it in more of a, uh, I don't want to say romantic, but more of a kind of like relationship aspect. Now, I guess to be fair, Lane kissed that one dude in the uh, freaking the actual show itself. Um, but that was like, that was a weird scene because it was like, she brought the dude over fucking like shoved him, right? It was the track 44 scene. I remember that. That shit was hilarious. And he ended up being one of the knights. So he, I'm pretty sure he got killed because all of them got wiped out. I don't know. This going down a weird direction. But it's like the point being Tomo and Kyoto are very important to her, right? People who are very important. So like her main two like friends uh, that she has, right? So something to where kind of how it's, it's not like something to where it's like she has like dozens of friends, right? You know, so it's like if there's an issue with one, okay, you know, it's not that big of a deal, right? Because she has others. It's like, these are very like, you know, what they do and kind of how they interact and what happens between them very much has an impact on our kind of like mental and emotional state. So hmm. that's the, uh, that's the big thing there. Right. So anyway, let's, uh, so 24, 25, 25. And again, there was no uh, beeping there. and again this is kind of that justification because another interesting thing was she brought up the question of well because we know she has self-esteem and self-confidence issues right and she brought up the question of whether you know she thought uh he could have possibly liked her or not like 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 right the old uh they, they've uh, evolved past you know the cootie stage of uh freaking you know of how uh boys and girls view each other right um, in the more of like, okay, you know, actually like having like crushes, you know, and like that kind of stuff. So it's like, again, raise that question, but like, it, it's kind of, it, it's almost like she's unwilling to accept that. Like, cause even if he doesn't actually like, like her, it's something to where like, just simply the fact that he like cares for her and appreciates her and is willing to kind of like go out of his way to do that. Like, it's just something she can't really accept. Right. So like, oh, he wrote everyone class. Oh, you mean like the 30 plus people in your class? Like he hand wrote them all letters. It's like, again, that's kind of unrealistic, right? But it's the only real justification she can think of in such a situation, right? So, hold on, is that one 26? Uh, 27, oh my God. All right, there we go. Yeah, 26. So let's do that, right?
。ノートのお礼にケーキ。学校の帰りに雑草。二人で待ちに行くの久しぶり。登下校の買い物は本当はダメなんだけど、みんなやってることだし、私がたまにしても。そうだ、お母さんにお小遣いもらわなくちゃ。お土産でお父さんとお母さんにでも買ってこなくちゃね。Again, so the I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really paying attention to this. I just saw the going out and it reminded me of fucking Siberia. And it's like, I don't know why they kept going back to that one cafe that's been shot up like 10 fucking times. Like, hey, you know, going out and there's I didn't even fucking go out in high school. It surprised me that people went out in high school. Like, I didn't even really go out until I barely went out in college, but like, you have to really go out of your way to like not go out in college, right? But something to where it's like, I didn't even know people went out in high school, like, nobody's going out in middle school. You know, but it's like, I guess the funny thing is, again, her buying the cake for, you know, Kyoto is like sort of an appreciation, right? But also, like, her thinking logically, okay, if I need to ask money from mom and dad, I'm probably going to need to get them something too. Again, it, it's kind of like you, you can see that like logical side or like intelligence side of her, like thinking about, like, okay, what do I need? Like, how would this like work out? And how would I go about、uh, doing this? So I think that's very interesting to kind of see there. So. It's 27. Damn, this is gonna, I'm, this is probably gonna be like 50 parts going through all of this, but I mean, I, I'm real, like, I genuinely enjoy this more than the show. What the fuck happened? Wait, hold on. What, what the fuck happened? We, we, we missed something. What happened? Because in the last one, that, maybe we need to watch, listen to the counseling because it's like, what the fuck happened? So, something happened between her and fucking Kyoto, right? Or Kyoko.、Um, again, obviously, you know, she now, I guess, oh, okay, I get it. Oh my God, this is the route it's going to go. Because here's the thing she confirmed, Lane confirmed that she was the only one who had received, you know, the letter from、uh, Selmo. So what happened was she probably asked Kyoko if she received one because she wanted to confirm or deny if everyone had. And Kyoko probably had no idea what she was talking about. She's like, What the fuck are you talking about? What letter? And then maybe it's something to where Kyoko kind of had, you know, a crush on like Tomo or something, right? And then that kind of pissed her off that Lane was getting special attention and that caused like a divide. Don't tell him, like, that's, that's my best guess, right? Based on this. I'm not sure if we're going to get an answer or explanation, but could be an old love triangle scenario, which is like, Come on, man. Fucking in middle school, too. Like, Jesus Christ. You know. Because it's not, they're not old enough to actually like fucking, you know, sort that shit out, right? But it's something to where it's like, again, you know,、uh, what would you call it? So that, that could be the explanation. Who knows? But, you know, it's very interesting there, right? Again, Lane also talking about how she feels like special, right? As a result,、um, you know, or how that, and maybe she talks about in this counseling. Let's see. So. うん。<笑> Oh my god, no fucking、uh, subtitles. This motive behind suicide. Well, I'm gonna fill my water.
Hold on, I'm gonna replay this because I missed the beginning part and I need to. <laughs> よかった。本当は愛の話を君は受けないって人は精神的に病んでしまうと私たちと別の価値観で動いてしまうことがあるの別の価値観命を失うことから体を傷つけることに恐怖を感じなくなったり逆にそれが自分にとってすごくいいことだって思い込んじゃうのどんなの理解でき
<clears throat> Jesus, death is a preferable outcome compared to what Lane's going through. That's the worry, right? You know, worst case scenario that she brought up. It's interesting because in the show too, you get a shot with Lane and her kind of evil self, like her, and her innocent self starts choking her evil self, right? And then her evil self says something funny like, look at me, I'm committing suicide or something like that, right? So it might not even be like an accidental thing more so than, uh, or like intentionally committing suicide more so than like accidental, right? But kind of who knows again, the big thing is that this is the, the, this seems to be very like, I don't want to say very different, but there seems to be some tangible differences between this and the show. So, right. Big thing there being, we can't always be like, oh, it's like this in the show, right? Probably the biggest difference is the wire just doesn't seem to be a thing. So again, you know, it's much more like grounded, you know, concrete and a uh, comprehensive there. So again, we can kind of see. I was like, doesn't normally freaking take that one. All right. So lab uh 25. Uh and again, literally just the whole chronological thing is really working out here. So pursuit, pursuit AU. Yeah. リノ こういうのって突然明らかな原因がなくても見に見なくなったっていうのただ見なくなったからって安心しちゃうとまた見えたりする ありがとう。そしたら問題ないよね。何にも問題ないけど、しばらくはちゃんと先生のことに来るって約束してね。うん。その代わり、いろいろ教えてほしい。何宿題とかいいわよ。こう見えてる先生は一応中学の時は学年
it's something to where a lot of what happens when people like kind of just like people will get treatment for it. Right. And it'll be like, okay, do this, you know, whatever. It'll be like very strict and very specific on what to do, but people will just do stuff until they get better. And once they feel as though they're better, they stop. But then it's something to where, again, you know, comes back and, or just never goes away because you didn't actually like fully it's that that's the big reason why, what would you call it? Um, what's the term you have these like bacteria and or viruses that are very like, what's the term um, that have like evolved and are very, what's, what's the term like drug resistant um, where you create these like super bacteria and or super viruses that are just like uh, drug resistant. Right. I don't remember what the term is called for it to where like, you know, antibiotics just don't work really because it's something to where people would like, they wouldn't take, they would only take them till they feel better, not to where, whatever was killed and then they would evolve to actually become more resistant to it. Right. So basically create super bad. That's how you create like super bacteria. Granted, I'm pulling this, all of this out of my ass just from what I've heard. Right. I'm not specialized in this. So take what I say with a grain of salt. Right. Like there's a, there's a 50, 50 chance, 50% chance. I say something that's actually true. 50% is just completely fucking wrong. But Again, right. So that's an interesting thing. I, I do in about this conversation, but what's more interesting is obviously the second part where, again, you know, Toko asks Lane, you know, if she wants to still come see her, right? And that's something to where Lane obviously responds with yes, you know. And I, I think because in this, especially compared to contrast to the Toko logs, where we know she was considering asking to be re, uh, to no longer be in charge of counseling lane and also to ask to just resign or like put in a resignation it, with it also being something where it's like, what would you call it? Um, the big thing there is, uh, yeah, you know, what would you call it? Um, yeah, you know, with what that ends up coming down to is, okay. You know, the, uh, big thing there being that's like, Again, you know, because then it gets to the conversation of, oh, you know, Lane asks, you know, okay, so she's like, I'll come see you, but in exchange, I want something, right? And then, like, Toko says, help with homework, right? Or asks if Lane needs help with homework. But instead, you know, I, I feel like this is a very telling thing. Lane's more interesting, curious into what Toka is doing, right? You know, with her line of work in psychology, you know, and that kind of stuff with kind of the obvious response from Toko being, you know, kind of like, we'll see, because it, it's so long as she is treating Lane, right? It's something to where it's kind of questionable whether or how, like, I mean, she's already seemingly doing stuff that's like, I don't want to say against protocol, but very unorthodox and off the books. So like her kind of just being straight up transparent, honest with Lane regarding what she does is potential for warrior concern, but I, I think it's very interesting that that's what Lane wants out of it. I mean, we know Lane is extremely competent. We've already, we saw the movie with her on the computer, right? And her doing her research. So the the issue with that, right? And then let's say before this crashes, again, it, it's just something to where it's like, it, it's really interesting that that's, uh, you know, being noted and or talked about, right? So again, just want to throw that up. Uh, out there so i guess we'll see in her uh, hold on do we have a diagnosis okay we do have a diagnosis right so diagnosis 20 so let's see what her response is and kind of what she needs to say about it so so again it's interesting to think about right because it's a double-edged sword you know because obviously you know being more transparent open can help but it could also just give them more worry and anxiety and stress. And I think, you know, the especially like interesting thing about it is again, given, you know, uh, Toko's own position, right. Um, like, again, I, I think that's, that's, that's very, uh, interesting there, you know, uh, just cause again, like kind of less being interested about her rather than the, uh, her position right but again also knowing the competence of lane but like it's it's just something where it's like 
again, that she has this like, or Toko at least is kind of like software was able to pick up on that. So, let's see. Okay, I'm way off. So, now we got some uh, lane diary entries, right? So, Still have no idea what happened. Again, still the interesting thing is we don't know what happened. Our sus what we suspect is that basically... Again, that's maybe a love triangle situation where Lane asked Kyoko whether or not she got the like letter from uh, Tomo, right? Thinking that he might have sent one to everyone in the class uh, as opposed to just her. But obviously, we know it's likely just to her. So Kyoko, maybe if she likes, you know, Tomo, it could create like, again, this awkward tension between them. I think another possibility is like evil Lane, or I guess whatever you call it, her other self may have come out, you know, at some point in time during their... Uh, you know, when they were talking, but then that's something to where it's like, she wouldn't really have knowledge or memory of it. And that, but that could still explain what happened. But I also feel like if that were in the case, she would probably bring it up with the therapist as opposed to like, okay, you know, not like, I, I feel like it's something where she wouldn't bring it up with the, uh, with Toko, right. You know, if it's something to where it's just like love, you know, or like typical middle school crush, issues so i guess kind of who knows there right we'll see i mean we got like a few more uh lane diary entries in a row so all right Wait, wait, what happened between, hold on, what did Toko do? Oh my god. Wait, did we, did we miss a freaking lab or something? So this must, hold on, this must be referring to probably this one lab we haven't seen. Because I'm like, the fuck happened? What did Toko do? You know, let's, hold on, let's, let's do this and then we'll go look at that lab, so. Hold on, stop. Oh my god, stop. I don't want to what the fuck it, it 100% dude, what happened in this lab? It literally like I don't do what the fuck happened? Some something happened during this session. Uh let's not spoil for us, right? Let's uh something must have happened during this session. I don't know what else it would be, but maybe this is Toko telling cuz we know she considers, you know, in whatever happened must be the motivation for Toko no longer wanting to see Lane or be the one counseling her and freaking resign. Dude, what the fuck happened in this lab? Some serious shit went down in this lab for all this stuff to be happening. What the fuck happened? No. <laughs> Hold on, stop. I actually, I actually need to, I need to piss. So hold on. I'm going to freaking do that. Because I'm something fucking happened during this one. I don't know what it is, though. But we'll see. All right, dude. Something must have fucking happened in this one. We don't know what, but this is the lab where... Oh, I'm not clicked on the screen. This is the lab where seemingly shit went down, you know. I don't know what happened, but.
えっと、難しいの。精神病って、本当はどの病気なのはい。大雑把に言えば、マヤさんの原因で心が病んでしまうと、通常の生活が送れなくなったり、なってしまうのかな。何かの原因例えばいっぱいあるけど、一つは心の問題。家庭環境や生活環境の問題でおかしくなることもあるし、突発的な精神的ショックでなることもあるわ。そう。例えば、大事にしてたペットが死んじゃったりして、そうなるケースとかあるわ。そうすると、体のどこかの障害が元で発病することもあるの。単純に、事故とかの外傷でそうなったり、お酒の飲みすぎで脳の機能がおかしくなったりね。アルコール中毒そう。<笑>さすがね。お酒を飲んでばかりいると、血液中にアルコールがいっぱいになるの。ほら、I've, I'll talk about alcohol. してるでしょでは、アルコールのせいで、体の器官が麻痺してるの。でも、普通の人はならないんだよね。そんなことないわ。アルコールが体から抜けるには24時間ぐらいかかるの。毎日飲んでいたら、1年中アルコール漬けの体になるわ。ずっと麻痺してると、感覚そのものがおかしくなると。具体的には、脳の組織が機能しなくなったり。怖いね。怖いことよ。でも先生も時々、お酒は飲むの。危なくない<笑>多分ね。タバコとかもそうだけど、お酒を飲んで騒ぐって、ストレスを解消するのよ。ストレスが解消されることは、体にとってすごく大事なことなの。ストレスって、よくわからない。昔、レインはここに来るのが嫌だったよね。うん。その嫌な気持ちを与えることをストレスっていうの。なくなってよかったでしょうん。他に病気の種類はちょっと待ってね。なんか喋りすぎて、まだが。Let me get some sake real <laughs>、oh. quick! Oh my god, dude. So. So, okay, so it must be the next lab. Something fucking happens in a lab soon that, you know, causes a complete breakdown in their relationship between Lane and、uh, freaking Telcom. The interesting thing here being so obviously Lane, you know, is it kind of inquired. So this is after Lane has come back, right? And is very clearly inquired about, you know, what Telco does. And again, the conversation eventually trails to, oh, you know, she basically treats people with mental illness and then kind of what mental illness is from a broad, like general perspective. And obviously they get on the track of like alcohol, right? Cause that's something to where, you know, I know that would be like quote unquote, a normal person being impacted by like something like tangible and physical, right. That's like affecting their mind, you know, As opposed to just something inherently being off, with again, you know, talking about like, okay, alcoholics, right? And people with rampant alcoholism just straight up like damage their brain. Like, so versus like, let's say Lane, who just has some, still probably due to something physical, right? But just has more inherent, you know, mental illness, right? Or like condition that like affects her mind rather than just her being an alcoholic, right? You know, so I think that's interesting. And again, the thing with alcohol, right? It's like, so. I'm like, if, if you know, you know, right. But the profession I'm in, you know, my work, you know, people have like very unhealthy coping mechanisms. That's what I've noticed. Alcohol is one、well, of them. Smoking is a big one. But like, yeah, you know, very just like blatantly unhealthy coping mechanisms.、Um, I know my big thing is caffeine. I'm working on it.、Um, I've always been working on it. It's again, you know, it's improving, right? But it's also like, you know, I guess part of the self justification is that it's not as bad as some of the other things. But, Like, again, you know, a big thing for me is I don't, well, A, I don't smoke at all, but B, I, I rarely drink, barely drink alcohol.、Um, for me, the big thing is like, I'll have like a couple or few, you know, beers with some friends, right? On like a weekend, right?、I、don't you drink during the weekday because that's, that's a little sus. It's like, okay, dude, like you get, you got shit to do. But like during the weekend, it's like, I, I don't drink to the point where I'm like passed out and thrown up, but I'll have like a couple or few beers, get a little,、uh, what's it called? Not like tipsy, but、uh, there, there's a better term, get a little buzzed, right? You know, Because, like, beyond that, it's like it's just downhill, bro. <laughs> like, you know, if like it's just downhill at that point,、and、then that's when you're actually like damaging yourself. But 
again, big thing being that, you know, again, so uh, Toko saying she enjoys a little sake, nothing wrong with that. Granted, we saw the one long entry from her where she was just blatantly drunk, uh, but that's uh, Takeshi problems, right? So, but again, you know, the big thing there is, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, she, like, again, you know, I, I'm curious, like, it must be in the next one. It, it must be in the next one, because, like, I'm, I'm genuinely, what the fuck happened between them? It must be in this one. Something happens in this lab that completely breaks down the relationship between Lane and Toka to where Lane's saying she hates Toka and doesn't want to see her anymore. And Toka asking for a request to like no longer counsel Lane and potentially resign. It's in this lab. Something happens in this lab that just completely destroys the relationship between the two. I don't know what, but... Okay, so it's like an actual, like, physical thing. Dude, what the fuck happens? I don't even care. I want to figure out what what happens between the two. Something happened between the two, you know. There was like, what the fuck happened between them? There's got to be another lab somewhere. Maybe we get it after we do this. I'm gonna. I want to see this diagnosis. Because I want to figure out what the fuck happened between these two. What the fuck happened between these two? So again, this is... Oh shit, I don't have one of those. <laughs> I mean, yeah, why would you fucking change it? Like, it, it's a good, like, it's, like, we see it in the show, right? Even in here, like, you know, it looks, it looks nice. Like, dude, what the fuck happened between, I, I, I'll figure this out the next time. Dude, something happened between them. Like, I don't know what it is. Something happened between them in, like, a lab or something where they had a complete fucking falling out. We know Lane's saying she hates Toko in this one, right? And then she, like, starts to go into the next one. But, and then we know Toko, you know. Dude, what the fuck happened? And we know Toko, in her more recent diary logs, talks about not wanting to see Lane anymore. It's like, dude, what the fuck happened? I don't know. We'll, we'll figure this out in the next time. But it's like something happened between them. I want to figure out what it is. But, you know, I guess we'll see, right? We'll just do that in the next time. But with that, you know, I don't really have anything else for this one. So, yep, that's it for this one. See you in the next one.